What's up, everyone? Thomas here with For Real. And guys, I cannot be more excited for what's coming up. This month, members of, of our For Real team, including myself, will be in Toronto covering the Toronto International Film Festival for the first time ever. Guys, it's really an exciting opportunity, and I'm sure we are all really looking forward to enjoying it and making the most of this opportunity. But for now, you know the drill. This is our customary pre-festival curtain raiser. And I honestly cannot wait for the conversation that I'm going to have with the team members that are going to Toronto. So first up on the line in Vancouver, BC, we have fellow for real writer and fantastic friend, Taylor Beaumont. I'm here. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited, of course, as well. Just I share your excitement and uh, Todd over there face it. palming. You know, let, OK, fine. Let's get over to you. What's up? The other person we have on the line is for real film festival fanatic Todd Pingelli. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm Taylor Baker. I'm happy to be here and um, <laughs> just happy to watch yeah, every movie at TIFF. So. <laughs> This will be the only time you see. Oh, man. <laughs> awesome, guys. Appreciate that. You know what, y'all? So um, something that I've realized is that I have, I don't know about you guys, but I've had a very, very hard time, like, not constantly thinking about TIFF all week and not constantly, like, filling a uh, conversation with TIFF. I don't know how, how you guys are feeling about that. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm the exact same way. I'm just like, it's constantly and i'm like oh what am i doing right now you know what i could be doing working on my tiff schedule again <laughs> yeah it's so funny because there's not even anything we can really do with it right now it's all so tentative um but it's just like i need to do something so let's just like shape up that schedule a little bit more yeah uh taylor i'm sure you, maybe you feel the same way yeah i mean sleeping and drinking tiff right now um yeah. But uh, yeah, no, my, I think I've got my schedule mostly uh, laid down the way I like it. But of course, you know, things are going to shift once I actually have to start locking in films. So, yeah. yeah. So and that's going to be the challenge. You know, I like, so this is obviously our first time covering TIFF in person. I, I, I did it last year virtually, and that was a, a fun experience. But I, you know, there's still so much new ground that is going to be covered here with like demand for movies and trying to make sure that we get the the screen times that we want to. And, uh, and yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna be a very interesting uh, experience trying to lock all that in. I feel like my schedule is like a, a big Jenga tower. And if one movie falls off my schedule, it just like messes <laughs> yeah. everything up. <laughs> So. Yeah, absolutely. I, I take solace in the fact that if I miss a movie that I really wanted to watch, I'm just hoping that it'll play at VIP. And of course, I say this, and the VIP schedule will probably be announced, or at least the lineup will probably be announced before or during TIFF. So like, I won't have the solace for very long, but, but it's, you know, it's always in the back of my mind. It's like, what happens if I miss that movie? Yeah. You, it's interesting. So Viv um, will be dropping their schedule on the 7th, the day before TIFF starts. <laughs> I can't do any valid planning <laughs> on that timeline because we have to get our tickets before the 7th. And so, yeah. you know, once things are locked in, they're kind of locked in. And and I don't know if there's going to be a whole lot of wiggle room for variation there. But uh, but I'm, I'm kind of with you, Todd, on that. Like, I'm, I, I don't know if anyone else does this, but I kind of catch myself thinking, that looks like a movie Biff will get. Maybe we'll we'll see it there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, well, Todd, uh, one thing I wanted to chat with you about is uh, is your schedule. Um, I know during Fantasia, we talked a bunch uh, about how many movies you were getting in uh, at Fantasia, and it was significantly more than me. <laughs> how many movies yeah. are you planning on seeing at TIFF this year? So uh, my in-person schedule has 37 on it. I will You're not be watching 37 movies unless my blood turns into pure cocaine. So, <laughs> like, that's just not going to happen. Um, I'm planning on dropping a couple. Like, I just already know I'm probably not going to get to them. But I'm hoping for, like, over... Th I'm hoping for, like, 30 or so in person and then no idea screeners just like a different sport entirely not even the same kind of ballpark 
Um, yeah, I'm I'm planning on just like killing myself with these movies. Yeah, and you know that <laughs> this is insane because the thing you're not saying is that you're not there for the. I mean, both of us are leaving a couple of days before the end of the festival, and so you yeah. really have I think it's like eight days to fit you know 30 plus movies in. Yeah, I fly out of Toronto on the 15th. So mm -hmm. like technically I could probably fit a movie in that morning. I think I have a movie in like my schedule for that morning. That's very much like probably not going to be seen. So like, that's what I mean. I'm, I'm yeah. working with probably roughly 30 films I really want to see. And then 37 would be like, if human <laughs> things like eating and sleeping weren't necessary. I know, right? Who needs those things? We have TIFF to do. <laughs> uh you know uh, and uh Beaumont we um you know you and I have been covering fil film festivals both virtually and in person for um for a couple of years now uh I actually wanted to ask you about how you feel about now being here and being able to cover TIFF in person what's your thoughts on that how are you feeling I'm feeling of the moon I'm super excited this is uh this feels like a a great progression for us it feels like the next step um and I feel like I'm really gonna elevate my game in the festival world I guess if that's a if that makes sense mm -hmm. I'm just ready to kind of attack this one kind of like I attacked Sundance which was ravenously uh consuming as much film as possible um I went hard with Sundance and I intend to go pretty hard with TIFF but I also want to you know, taking the festival atmosphere a bit more, um, you know, taking more of the city and what, uh, you know, other events that the festival is going on in the in-person side of things. And just being in Toronto, of course, is just going to make that all that much more exciting. I haven't been to Toronto myself since I was like in my teens. So like maybe like a good like 14, 15 years ago. So the whole thing is going to be new feeling and exciting and uh, just invigorating, I hope. So I'm just going to kind of use that energy of being in a new city and when a new ish, I've been there before, obviously, but, you know, new in this scenario, a new city, a new festival, and just kind of run with that and make it the best festival I can, hopefully. Yeah, it's going to be great. Yeah. I know, uh, I know we, I'm pretty sure we've all kind of blocked off Friday night to just like hit the town and like explore the downtown area and kind of see what kind of mischief and mayhem is 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 happening that evening so looking forward to that and and i know that uh tiff does parties and stuff like that as well and so i think we just have to keep an eye on their on their twitter page to to kind of figure out where where the cool people are <laughs> yeah i want to rub some elbows with some cool people yeah <laughs> yeah exactly no or, you know you know nick well, cage or whoever's there nick, I don't or know. nick cage <laughs> whatever right you know it's uh is um anna kendrick you know she'll she'll be at some of these parties right <laughs> sure i don't see why not i don't see why not either yeah let's talk about some of these movies that we have going on uh or that we're looking forward to seeing at tiff you know speaking about all these uh celebrities that are going to be there um there are definitely some highlights i'm sure that we all have for what we want to see and what we are most anticipating and and um i kind of challenged us to get a, a diverse selection of films here so maybe this not, might not be our like top three but these are you know films that we are definitely looking forward to and uh, and have on, high on our priorities list so um let's start with you Beaumont let's g give me one movie that you are uh that you are looking forward to uh yeah so obviously huge laundry list of films to choose from and obviously there's some very you know given ones um that I could list off right now we all know the big ones that are hitting tiff at this point but um yeah I figure I think the spirit of this is to kind of pick some under the radar kind of not necessarily under the radar but just like the less the less big big ones mm -hmm. um so my first one I got a I got a rep Canadian content uh, I'm going with the film uh, Until Branches Bend it's a um, Canadian directorial debut from a director by the name of Sophie Jarvis, uh, world premiere of this film. So it's premiering for across the world at TIFF. And yeah, like this film just kind of uh, checks all the boxes for like something that feels homegrown and very Canadian and very, um, very personal. It's um, uh, Jarvis is an alumna of SFU, which is where I went to university. So, you know, that's pretty cool. And uh, she's based in Vancouver. So it's just all like, you know, I got to represent when I go there. Um, 
yeah, so it, it concerns like a cannery worker in the Okanagan region of British Columbia, which I feel which I've been to. Obviously, it's a it's a popular destination spot when you live in Vancouver, and I just feel like I've never really seen it in a film, uh, if at all. So um, it'll be really interesting to see how she captures the region. It, it's very gorgeous and picturesque, uh, beautiful lakes and rolling hillsides and mountains and um, everything there and uh, vineyards and so forth. So it'll be really cool to see how that is rendered in this film shot on 16 millimeter. So we'll see how that kind of works out for this film. But yeah, it concerns a, a cannery worker who uh, works in a, a, a small town in the region there. And uh, this worker discovers a, a species of beetle that may, you know, threaten um, the, the fruits that's grown there. And thus the kind of whole like the industry that the town kind of runs off of. So her discovery of this kind of has this whole trickle effect and it uh, obviously rubs a lot of people the wrong way because it can affect uh, the whole livelihood of this town in a negative way. So yeah, so it's gonna be, from what I understand, kind of like a bit of social realism, but it kind of has like a air of like a thriller to it because it's, um, uh, you know, it's about her navigating you know the the flack that she gets from everyone around her and um yeah i just want to see how it's taken what direction it really goes in and how um yeah how it renders this region uh and on film because i'm i'm super excited for that so yeah, yeah. that's my first pick <laughs> todd is this one uh is this one uh something that came across your radar yeah it, it was this was one that was I don't even remember what time I had it slugged in for, but it was in like my very first draft schedule where I was like, I'm going to fit that in. And then uh, the Jenga tower started to collapse and I don't <laughs> know where it's going to fit in again. I really want to see it. I'm also hoping that if I can't get to it a tip that I hope it'll play Viff because it's a local film. Um, so it does it seem pretty, pretty lined up. Yeah, it does seem pretty lined up to uh to qualify as a as a VIF film. So yeah, um, it's interesting because it doesn't have too many show times here, so it's going to be a very limited uh limited opportunity to see it. Um, at least at TIFF. So hopefully VIF will give us more opportunity too. I wasn't able to slot this one into my schedule, uh, but uh, thanks to Beaumont, this is on my radar, and hopefully he enjoys it at TIFF. So. Uh, yeah, hopefully. I, I have it slotted into a day with five films on my schedule on the same day. Mm -hmm. So if I'm like <laughs> feeling completely burnt out, I could end up seeing this one at VIF. I can I can see that maybe happening, but I would love to catch it at TIFF. It sounds yeah, no, it's a good it's a good one to to spotlight here. Um hey, geez, you guys in your five five movie a day. Oh, hold on. <laughs> you have five films in your days. I explain that. Films. One of us. <laughs> I explain that, and kind of like you guys. I mean, there are some that I might drop, but I, and and maybe that's where Viff announcing on the seventh will come in handy. Is like we can know which ones to drop along the way. So, um, so we may not be able to plan our Jenga tower around Viff, but maybe we can know which pieces to like poke out <laughs> <laughs> without it crumbling. So. Cool. Good selection there. Todd, what's uh, what's a movie that you are looking forward to? To I'm going to go the opposite direction of Taylor here, and I'm going to not do Under the Radar. I'd probably have um, maybe one of the biggest names playing at TIFF. I'm going to talk about first, and that is Pearl. This is the Ty West follow-up to X, which came out earlier this year, which is just this generation's Texas Chainsaw Massacre, not to be mistaken with this year's Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> um, it brings back Nina Goth as the main character, although I think she's playing a kind of like earlier doppelganger version of her later character. I really put this one on here, not because I was such a huge fan of X, I thought it was like fine, but because I saw X in the middle of the day in an empty theater, just like completely alone. I was the only person in the theater and I'm planning on seeing Pearl at Midnight Madness in what is sure to not be an empty theater. So this <laughs> is really like a kind of exact opposite side of the coin culture shift for Ty West's second film in this extended universe this year. And I think that's a really exciting prospect for me because I think I might've enjoyed X a lot more if I'd seen it with a crowd and not just by myself. So 
I'm really looking forward to to that experience. Whether or not the movie works for me is, uh, you know, obviously who knows. But I'm I'm looking forward to the experience of finally doing a Midnight Madness showing uh, at any festival in person because obviously their tip is not the only one. It's the staple at Sundance too. But mm-hmm. you know we haven't done it in person. It's going to be exciting to finally do it in person. I think this will be a good a good one to do it at. So yeah. yeah I would, if I, if I wasn't such a an old man, I would go to a Midnight Madness screening. <laughs> but that Come just on. sounds that sounds so daunting. To actually, uh, in this particular case, I have a conflict, uh, which may or may not work out depending on if I go to it or not. Uh, but that's my excuse right now. Is there's a movie that goes 15 minutes past midnight when this starts, oh. and so. <laughs> can't make it sorry no actually pearl is one because i did i'm probably on the same page with you todd i i think x uh was was a, a fine movie i didn't hate it i actually um had a pretty decent time with it and so i i appreciate that it seems like these two movies were kind of planned in tandem with each other um for pearl to come out so quickly in succession after x um and that means a lot to me. Uh, it's it seems very purposeful. It, this doesn't seem uh, like it's it's only here by popular demand. And so, you know that that is working uh, in its favor for me. And uh, and I hope that it uh, plays well at TIFF because I think that that marketing would be really great for going into its opening weekend right after uh, it premieres at TIFF. Um, Beaumont, do you have thoughts on this one? I would just echo what you guys have said thus far. I mean, um, I think this movie is perfectly, perfectly suited to the Midnight uh, Madness type format. Uh, Ty West's previous, obviously, I yeah, I kind of felt the same way. It, it uh, I, I enjoyed it, but I felt like it could have done a little more, just amp things up a bit. But maybe we will kind of get that with Pearl. Maybe that's kind of what's or I don't know, not necessarily what Ty West has been building to, but maybe, you know, ideas that he didn't have time to explore in X can be explored in Pearl. And um, yeah, so yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be there in the midnight screening if I can, doing everything in my power. Y'all have fun with that. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Well, the movie that I want to talk about first is a special presentation film. Um, and it's the film On the Come Up, directed by Sanaa Lathan. And the thing about this movie is that I I guess I picked it just off of a really good feeling um, that this could be uh, an interesting under the radar hit, like something that really is a, a pleasant surprise. Um, and I think there's there's a few things working for it in my favor one of uh one of them being that it's a directorial debut um and i i like seeking out directorial debuts i think that's a really exciting um uh thing to witness you know the start of a, a director's career although sanaa lathan is is an actress i actually know her mo- most prominently from uh alien versus predator you know way back when um and uh and so It'll be interesting to see that, um, but also I think that they have some music uh, uh, industry influences in here as well. Method Man is a part of the cast. Uh, Lil Yachty uh, looks like he's a part of the cast as well. So there's that. Um, and really the, the thing that this movie reminds me of, at least the premise, um, with battle rapping oh i guess i should give the synopsis the synopsis says a talented high school student dreams of making it big in the world of battle rap um and i after my experience with the movie bodied at the seattle film festival i'm like yeah put me back in a movie with battle rapping i am i don't know i don't think this is going to go as hard as bodied did i don't know who saw bodied but that movie goes hard uh, with its battle raps uh and I enjoyed it. So I don't think it's going to go that hard, but I do think it's going to be a very interesting display of performing talent, uh, of acting talent. Um, and uh, and on top of that, um, I mean, it's a Paramount Plus film. So I think if I'm not mistaken, it goes to streaming uh, like a couple weeks after it screens at TIFF. So it'll be uh, publicly available uh, relatively quickly. Um, and yeah, I, I, I think that um i'm working off of like just like gut feelings with this with this festival um i had a gut feeling about uh 
about um, the swearing jar. Uh, and I got to see that. And I think that that gut feeling paid off. And so I'm just going to roll with that momentum. I think this gut feeling is hopefully going to pay off. And I'm going to try to see it uh, first day that I get, get to Toronto. So uh, any, any other thoughts about on the come up? I hadn't put it on any of my lists yet, but you know, I um, it sounds very exciting. I'm gonna uh, tell I you what totally... you're missing out on. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well, I might be able to catch it. Um, you know, I'm not ruling it out yet. Uh, I, you know, the the premise definitely appeals to me, and I think you know a film that really puts you in the seat of the person in the rap battle that really gets you into that uh, that intensity, that frenzied, um, mm -hmm. just that you know, kind of spit flying at you kind of like yeah. rap battle kind of moment. I think that's <laughs> like, that's really exciting. That's, that's really, you know, exciting stuff. So yeah, I could be on board for sure. Yeah. Todd, any thoughts? Uh, I'm going to see it. I don't know if I'm going to see that tip, but it's definitely, it's like, you know, it's definitely on the long-term watch list where it's mm -hmm. definitely getting watched. Yeah, yeah, see, and I guess it's it's nice when you know that a movie is coming out shortly after TIFF because at least if you can't catch it at at the festival, at least you know when you'll be able to watch it. So uh, and there's a number of titles that are kind of like that and things that I have to decide, like, am I going to spend time on it at TIFF or am I going to wait till it comes out? But uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm glad that there is also other interest with you guys on this one as well. <laughs> uh, Beaumont, we're back to you. What's, uh, what's oh. another movie you're looking forward to? So I thought I'd mix it up and go documentary for one of my picks because, well, I mean, documentary wasn't, I wasn't even intending on watching many documentaries at TIFF at all. I'm really more interested in the narrative sections, but uh, yeah, I, I thought I'd mix it up and I'm going with the new film from Werner Herzog, uh, Theater of Thought. Um, the dude is 80 years old, still churning out documentaries. He's uh, as I'm, you may or may not know that he's been churning out documentaries on everything from volcanoes to uh, social media and the internet to, um, you know, how the meteorites impacting the earth infect, uh, affect the landscapes and so forth. So he's covering a lot of ground, a lot of big, broad um, topics, but now he's kind of shifting his focus to the human brain and what goes on there, how it works, all the kind of groundbreaking uh, studies that are being done on the human brain um, and, you know, very kind of futuristic sounding stuff in many senses uh, that will probably, you know, surprise a lot of people who check it out, like things that are going on uh, in that field that just we didn't know about. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in this one. I, I really want to see how he uh, takes this topic and how he explores it from different angles. It looks like he does approach it from different angles based on what I've seen uh, in, in writing so far. Uh, everything from, you know, what can, you know, political, ethical, kind of medical, metaphysical kind of angles and, and how we approach the brain, how we um, use our brains, how our um, brains, you know, kind of then affect us and so on and so forth. It's, yeah, it's obviously very heady material, but, uh, you know, Herzog, I think he, he makes things still approachable and he kind of always approaches things from a sense of wonder and enthusiasm. So, yeah, I'm, I'm putting that one down. I'm going to catch that one on an earlier morning, but it's it's going to be on my watch list for sure. Very cool. Todd, is this one on your radar? This one was not. There are a couple documentaries that tip that were on my radar, and I was also like not anticipating really watching um, documentaries at mm -hmm. TIFF, but I, I mean, I ended up looking at, at like the list of obviously like all the movies, but it, but I had a lot of the documentaries and, and I just don't know if I was like willing to use a ticket on Herzog at this point um, <laughs> at 80. It's just so like, Oh man, is it going to hit or miss? But um, I'm, I will 100% take Beaumont's word for it. If it, if it slaps because when Herzog is good, it's great. So. Yeah. Well, is, is, is he going to be, I mean, this is going to be fire of love. Good. I don't know, Beaumont. Like. <laughs> 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 well, I, for me, there's not much that can top Fire of Love, right? <laughs> it's still way up there for me on my on my uh, list of best this year. But but no, I I want to keep an open mind and give uh, you know you know check out some other docu's and you know maybe be wowed. I want to be open to that. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm also kind of on the same page with you guys. I don't have a whole lot of docs on my list, um, but I I 
glanced over this one and said, that seems interesting. Um, I probably won't use a ticket on it, but then Beaumont chose it for his one of the things to talk about here. And so now I'm like, oh, I'm still not going to use a ticket on it. But, <laughs> <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> but if it plays at this, <laughs> Then, then maybe I'll watch it there. So that's kind of, I see how it is. That's kind of where I'm at. I am with that. <laughs> Todd, what's next for you? Um, what's next for me is um, the Eternal Daughter by Joanna Hogg. So really looking forward to this movie a lot. Like ever since I heard it was announced, like even before Tiff, because I'm a really big fan of the Souvenir Part One and Two, Joanna Hogg's uh, most recent films starring Tilda Swinton and her daughter. So The Eternal Daughter is also starring Tilda Swinton. Um, Hogg has a history of working all the way, I think, back to the 80s with Swinton. And she likes to reuse a lot of the same actors and actresses, right? Um, Tom Hiddleston's in a lot of her films from the 2000s. And The Eternal Daughter follows Tilda Swinton's character as she is going to, on like a vacation or of some sort, to a hotel off in the woods, uh, presumably in England, as they are English. And things get really suspenseful. And it's kind of a folk horror ghost story tale from Joanna Hogg. And I just think that's going to lend itself really perfectly to her directorial style, because it's a very mute in the kind of like embedded into the wood of a scene directorial style that she has. And so I think it kind of like, ritual-like uh, approach to story storytelling in this case is going to be really interesting. I've heard nothing but rave reviews from people who have seen this movie about Tilda, Tilda Swinton's performance in it. And uh, basically, Tilda Swinton's only making wild career choices at this point. She seems like she's fully moved away from starring in anything super populist uh, like the Doctor Strange movies and is only making things like Memoria or 3,000 Years of Longing or the souvenir films. And I suspect that the Eternal Daughter is going to be yet another jewel on that crown of, of weird indie film that is going to just like speak to me on a really deep level. So I'm really looking forward to the film. And uh, yeah, that's the Eternal Daughter. Yeah. Oh man, I'm pretty sure this is one that you're interested in as well. It is. I admittedly have to do my homework because I have uh, not seen the souvenirs part one or two, um, but I'm going to okay. do that homework. I fully intend to watch these films before I, I, I go to TIFF and <laughs> Just settle down, guys. I'm good. At, I know. I'll get to it. <laughs> but, uh, no, it's yeah. funny. I'm, I'm laughing at Todd's reaction. I've only seen the souvenir part one, and I honestly wasn't the. I mean, it, I don't know if it was my style at that point. I'll have to revisit it. So it, it does seem like it'd be a little too slow for Thomas. Yeah. It's like too long. It's like 60 minutes. Which is oh, like my goodness. That is the longest. <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> 60 they got movies minutes. going over an hour now. Jeez. <laughs> my attention span, guys. This is about as long as a TikTok. <laughs> yeah. But, yes, I'm going to try to check out this one for sure. And yeah, just going to do some, some homework before I head to TIFF. And uh, hopefully that'll put me in the right mindset. But yeah, I'm always here for Tilda Swinton. Literally always. Um, yeah. So yeah, I'm expecting good things. You know, I... I the Eternal Dog, I don't know a whole lot about it. I, and like I said, I've only seen the Souvenir Part 1. Um, it, I, I think I was in a different place in my like uh, film uh, criticism at that point. Um, so I need to revisit it. Uh, it would be nice to watch Part 1 and Part 2 of the Souvenir. But honestly, look, Tilda Swinton in a, 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 a slow simmering kind of tension suspenseful film look I saw Memoria and I'm sold on this right <laughs> like I think I would have much different feelings on this if I hadn't seen Memoria I'd, I'd be what you guys would expect me to be like ah oh, that's a long slow movie or whatever but I am a changed man <laughs> and so yeah I, I'm like I would be fine if the eternal daughters just Memoria without the bang yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in every single way i'll be like yeah i'm seeing an opening night you can absolutely. all yeah, yeah. Absolutely. go to hell <laughs> <laughs> yeah so this is certainly uh, on my priorities list as well so good pick there todd um um the next movie that i'm going to talk about is a gala presentation so kind of a high profile one 
Um, and that is The Good Nurse, directed by Tobias Lindholm. The uh, description reads, Jessica Chastain plays a hospital nurse faced with the growing suspicion that her coworker and friend, who is played by Eddie Redmayne, um, is quietly killing off patients in this true crime thriller. Um, it is worth mentioning uh, at the top of this, if you don't know or are not familiar with Tobias Lindholm, he is a co-writer of other festival hits like The Hunt and Another Round. So that's a really, yeah, that's a really good like selling point right there, right? Um, yeah, because I know both of those movies had a lot of rave reviews. Um, and uh, Jessica Chastain and Eddie Redmayne are always selling points for me. Even when Jessica Chastain has like a year and a half of movies that I didn't care about, um, <laughs> I'm still I'm still here for it. I'm still a, a fan, and so um, I look forward to anything that she's in. Um, so uh, I think that's a great cast. Um, <clears throat> sorry, uh, and I think that the premise is just really interesting. I mean, I like thrillers, and I I think that. Um, this one particularly appeals to me because I, I recently watched the uh, Apple TV series um, Five Days at Memoria, which kind of in its own capacity deals with hospital and medical ethics. But I think that that is just such a there's such a wealth of storytelling to be done in that arena, um, <laughs> especially with my own personal opinion about the American health system. Uh, but I, I just think that this is a movie that's going to capitalize on that. It's got the talent for it. Um, it's a Netflix film, uh, so it'll be out on Netflix at some point. I don't think a, a date's been set yet, but it's a Netflix film. Um, and yeah, just lots of good selling points on this one that uh, that makes me want to put this higher uh, in my priorities list. So, the good nurse. Nice. Who else? Nice. Who else is excited for this one? <laughs> Yeah, I am for sure. Uh, it admittedly, I didn't make it into my original, you know, blocking of uh, films for my schedule, but I can definitely see myself slotting it in. If not, I am sticking around the festival for a few more days than you guys are. Mm -hmm, so yeah. <laughs> uh, I could play a little catch up there after you guys are gone, maybe. Who knows? Yeah. I'll see how I'm doing. But yeah, obviously, this is uh, yeah one that appeals to me. Uh, I'm really kind of interested in seeing what Eddie Redmayne's able to do here. Um, he's obviously kind of, we were so used to him in those kind of like dweebish little mm -hmm. you know, soft-spoken kind of roles. And maybe that's what he kind of plays here, but obviously there's going to be a more menacing and creepy edge to his character here. So he hopefully has a bit more, he has more teeth in this role. And uh, if he if he pulls it off, I think it could be, I think it'd be really good. So yeah, I, uh, I will catch this. And if not, I will get on it on Netflix for sure. Yeah, Todd, your thoughts? Uh, I'm definitely seeing it. Like I'm definitely planning on seeing it at least. Um, if only to see if they're going to make Jessica Chastain do an English accent or Eddie Redmayne <laughs> do an American accent. <laughs> because I am not convinced Chastain can do an English accent. And I know for a fact Redmayne can't do an American accent. <laughs> so I'm just like, I'm all in I can't wait to see it. Maybe great. they sh they should have gotten Harry Styles for this one. <laughs> oh my god, that'd be like the fourth Harry Styles movie this fall. I know that guy is is overworking and kind of causing too much ruckus in the in the headlines. <laughs> plot twist: They both have to do an Australian accent. Whoa, <laughs> that is a plot. Or uh, where where is Lindholm from? Is that Sweden or? Denmark. Denmark. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. What if we didn't know they were just speaking Danish the whole time? <laughs> well, this is a foreign language film. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's funny. Very cool. Well, I'm glad we're all excited about that one. Beaumont, we're back to you. We'll do another uh, uh, one. One last round of uh, of interest here. Beaumont, what's next on your list? This one snuck up on me. I hadn't even considered it when I went through the TIFF schedule at first, but I heard some good buzz about it following uh, festivals like Cannes. Um, it's After Sun, uh, directed by Charlotte Wells. She's a Scottish uh, writer-director, and it's her debut. This is the North American premiere of this film. It, um, yeah, like, got some, like, it's kind of like a dark horse pick as to, like, people's favorite pick from the festivals, like David Ehrlich called it his best thing you saw it can um so I'm, I'm just like my interest is peaked um it's about an adult character at a certain stage of her life 
kind of recalling her past with her father. So she recalls a past when she was 11 years old and her and her father went on a trip to Turkey, I believe it is. And uh, it's just a film that kind of obviously weaves present day moments with the past. Um, this film does it with both uh, mini DV like um, footage and also 35 millimeter um, shot imagery. So it's gonna be uh, weaving different kinds of film styles and obviously different timelines. And my hope is that it does it in a very interesting way, kind of in a, in a warm, but also melancholia kind of tinged way. I think it's, you know, kind of have a, you know, maybe a bit of a sorrowful kind of angle, sorrowful kind of angle to it, but I think it's gonna be kind of life affirming as well. Uh, very uh, personal film from the sounds of it. And yeah, I, I'm kind of, I'm, I like to get it lost in those movies sometimes. I really like to let them envelop me and I'm hoping this one does exactly that. So yeah, after Sun. Guys, this is an A24 film? All, all, all one word. Is this Yeah, a yeah. What? Um, did I just blow your mind? Did you not know about this? I did not know that was an A24 oh, yeah, film. This is, yeah, this is on my list. When I, what? I was heading into the heading into the the festival. It wasn't like wasn't like broker. I'm, I'm actually just now realizing how many movies are A24. After Sun, Causeway, I didn't realize it was A24, and that one's yeah. really high on my list. Uh, Eternal Daughter, A24. Always. <laughs> what? Let's All right, go, yes, baby. My, my mind is blown. <laughs> souvenirs were both souvenirs were A24 as well. I, I, I she, yeah, that makes sense. I, I remember working with them. I remember like, that. Okay, dude. Okay, yeah. After Sun is now a much higher priority. Let me go reassess my Jenga. Thomas's <laughs> <laughs> third film he's going to talk about is After Sun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, guys, and check out this movie that I just heard about. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> wait, what? Yeah, y'all. I mean, here's the thing, right? Like, A24, you, you guys know, or at least maybe you're aware that three of my top eight films this year are A24 films. So, yeah. Look at Todd thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Is Cha Cha Rose Snow the A24? What's that? Is Cha Cha? No, A24? that one. No. Nope. It's so it's, it's, uh, it's After Yang everything everywhere and marcel so i have those i think those three are also in my top 10 a24 they, they are killing it this year they're yeah, also they, are. they also have some mess stuff i mean x was okay and uh and there's a couple of, oh men you know mm -hmm. but when they when they hit they slap all right so i'm ready Wait. to be abused a24 by a24, is, <laughs> a24 is isn't the whale also a24 oh is it oh it is yeah <sighs> What? A24 is, is trying to come back and take the belt that Neon took last year. Good for them. Neon, Neon had the belt last year. Yeah. Yeah. Good for Well, is Neon, where is Neon in this festival? I don't know. But Neon had like Flea last year and had the they worst did. person yep. in the world. It had Pig. Oh, it yeah. Had, it had a lot of good stuff last year. And it was for like sure. Well, this, I think this year is going to go to A24. Neon, Neon would have a whole lot of catching up to do at TIFF, and I just don't see it right now. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, all right, Todd, give us one more. What are you excited for? Um, so my last one is not an A24 film, but it is from a couple of folks who have an amazing history of working together. And I would be remiss if I didn't pick it because it's the only movie my partner is like, Hey, fuck you, Todd, for going to TIFF and seeing this. <laughs> and it's The Sun by Florian Zeller. So yeah. Florian Zeller made The Father. Uh, I get, last year, I think technically it had its its you know premiere for general audiences. It premiered on the festival circuit in 2020. It is the role that Anthony Hopkins won Best Actor for at the 2021 Academy Awards. The Sun is... Also a play written by Florian Zeller that is being adapted on a screenplay by Christopher Hampton, who adapted The Father, uh, the other Zeller play. It is the second, I don't know if it's the second chronologically in a trilogy of plays turning into movies by Zeller, but it's the second in a trilogy that's, you know, of adaptions. And it stars Hugh Jackman. It stars Anthony Hopkins, who I don't believe is reprising the role from The Father, but is in an entirely new role. It stars Vanessa Kirby, who I, I think should have won Best Actress when Hopkins won Best Actor for what she did in Pieces of a Woman. 
it just has a really incredible cast. Laura Dern, uh, another recent Academy Award winner. And I'm just like ready to have my heart broken again. And I just couldn't, I couldn't be more excited for this. The Father was one of my five favorite, favorite films of last year. Mm-hmm. I think Florian Zeller has a way to really communicate family values. This is about a a married couple that are, have a child and a son from a previous marriage gets kind of reintroduced into the family. He suffers from depression and anxiety and is trying to cope with with you know that and it's kind of about that family trying to work through that and yeah i just it sounds like it's going to break my heart again and the father broke my heart and florian zeller is an amazing writer and uh, and all of those people are amazing actors so it just I mean, i'm setting the bar too high but it just seems like of all of those things perform at an average level this movie will be exceptional so <laughs> i'm really looking forward to it and oh. yeah Man, you have to mention the father. That movie just like broke me. I know. <laughs> that was a tough one. Uh, which is why the son is also really high on my priorities list as well. So I'm happy that you chose it. I, I think that um I remember the father being, I mean, it feels very playish. I remember watching the father and thinking this feels like a play, and then realizing later that it was adapted from the play. And and I like those, you know, I'm very much I, I am okay with like very minimal cinema, right? One location few few cast members like i really love that and so that's why i love the father i don't know what to expect from the son except that except that i'm probably gonna be sad <laughs> afterward yeah um, i just can't imagine we're gonna leave that movie and be like that was a lot of fun that was just yeah. like i had a blast <laughs> <laughs> yes because that's exactly how he felt after the father <laughs> yeah. uh beaumont what are your thoughts on the son I'm I'm looking forward to have a nice group cry with you guys afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To the same screening. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, we'll we'll go we all plan on going to the same screening of that. I can't remember your schedule. Maybe because I have a couple. That, well, a couple. I have it tentatively scheduled for the Tuesday, the thirteenth. No yeah, I yeah. I think there's two screenings that day, though. Yeah, I also so. have it on Tuesday. Yeah, I do so as well. But I think I'm, I'm going to the noon, or at least I'm going to try to go to the noon. We'll one. just like we'll hand yeah. off a box of Kleenex. Yeah, everybody. exactly. Yeah, yeah. We can <laughs> just go into the theater. <laughs> in fact, that should come complimentary. You can't show movies like this and like not, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> not provide people the necessary equipment to get through it. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. This will be a this will be an interesting one. But like you said, a, a fantastic cast. I mean, not even knowing anything about the plot, if you just look at the cast. It's like yeah. wow. And it's also it's adapted like... by Christopher Hampton, who I mentioned, mm-hmm. and he won the Academy Award for Best Writing for The Father for adapting yeah. Zeller's play. And so it's the same writer director coming back with with Hopkins also returning, and and then all of these great pieces. Not that Olivia Coleman from The Father could like be replaced, mm-hmm. but like you know, it's just like you're adding a, this is a larger cast than the father and it's just like if it's a step up in any way whatsoever then it's going to be just absolutely mind-blowing so, good yeah, looking good forward pick. to it good pick there looking forward to his third film which will be entitled the holy ghost i would just like if he took a hard left it's like yeah. introducing fantastic four directed by <laughs> Whoa. And then, yeah except we're gonna get to the end of fantastic four just weeping because apparently that's what he yeah. does <laughs> he just makes yeah there's a post credit scene at the end of the sun where just like richard reed just swoops through the window <laughs> yes oh well, I, I don't know where plot twist this is a marketing ploy for for marvel <laughs> that's funny all right, guys, I have one more. And, and actually, actually, um, we've all mentioned really great movies here, but this is one that had that very quickly became one of my most anticipated films at the festival. Um, it's it, it's a uh, screening in the Discovery program, uh, and it's the film The Inspection, uh, directed and written by Elegance, Elegance Brayton. Um, and the description says Brayton's remarkable debut inspired by his own life story follows uh, a man played by Jeremy Pope who joins the Marine Corps after being thrown out of his mother's home at 16 for being gay and living for years in housing precarity. Um, by the way, also a 24, uh, an A24 film. So we have all chosen A24 films. Um, so well done, guys. <laughs> um, 
uh, and so and it's interesting because I didn't even it wasn't until after I chose it that I realized it was it's a 24 and that just like made it an even higher priority um but this is an interesting one um because first of all a 24 but also I just I saw the trailer, right? And I try not to watch trailers before I go into movies, um, especially at film festivals when you, it's much easier to avoid trailers. But the trailer for this film might actually be one of, it will be on my list of favorite trailers uh, of movies this year. Um, it just seems like such a compelling story. And I really hope that it hits as hard as I'm as I'm thinking it will. It just, ha it just exudes so much like inspiration and like, um just a, a really inspiring story um it's a directorial debut by uh by elegance and um i think that oh also the credits for this film are are really great you have effie brown as, as producer who produced dear white people um lachlan milney is the director of photography ep for movies like minari hunt for the wilder people um and little monsters so that's pretty cool um, and the supporting cast includes um, Bokeem Woodbine and uh, Gabrielle Union. So um, just really, really strong credits for this film, especially in um, uh, as a directorial debut here. Uh, and it was selected to be one of the closing night films at New York Film Festival. So a lot of really great reasons for this movie to be a really, really good film. Did this one pop up on either of your guys' radars? It, it popped up on mine and uh like that that supporting cast is you know fantastic and it's just like oh mm -hmm. and i don't know if i'm going to be able to get to it i just like it, there was a, i can't remember the timing conflict but it was like a big timing conflict mm -hmm. for something i wanted to see and uh yeah it's if i can't get to it it'll be one of my bigger regrets yeah but <laughs> yeah I'm Such glad. I'm glad at least you're going to see it. At the I am. Very least. I have moved. I moved screenings to make time yeah. for this one. <laughs> like that is how quick. That is how high of a priority it came for me. And and yeah, I remember being so like I seeing the title and the cover image and just kind of glossing over the 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 description. I was just like, oh, okay. But yeah, looking into it more and then watching the trailer, I'm just like, oh, actually, let, let's, <laughs> let's prioritize this one. So, but nice. what about you? Well, I'm gonna have to watch that trailer because yeah, oh, I, I just went, <laughs> it's popped up on my radar, but yeah, I just haven't, you know, amidst the the frenzy of putting everything else to my schedule, I just haven't gotten around to this one. But yeah, no, everything you said has me very on board. Hopefully, the trailer will kind of uh, you know pique my interest even further. And yeah, like uh, like you said, like there's a you, some really really big and talented names behind this one, mm -hmm. and I'm really excited to see what they can all do. It's um, yeah, it's a movie that could really make some some big waves if it's if it's if it really knocks it out of the park. So yeah, I think so. Um, it does have a release date. I think it's scheduled to come out in November. Um, so. Cool. It'd be a be a good holiday film, I suppose. Um, kind of one of those inspirational holiday films, uh, inspirational stories. But uh, yeah, better yeah. better or worse trailer than Wakanda Forever. Oh boy, Wakanda Forever. That's a that's a hard one to compare. Um, but it it's it has those kind of I, no, no trailer is going to be better than Wakanda Forever. Um, <laughs> but go. no no trailer ever. It's gonna be it's a, it's a good trailer. <laughs> that trailer i i am sad i slept on that trailer for two for two or three days because <laughs> i again, like, it was two or three days of my life i'll never get back without having seen the. i know <laughs> like i said i try to avoid trailers like i do not um actively pursue watching trailers because sometimes trailers can spoil movies and you know honestly let me let me just walk into the movie and just experience it right and so i i did i did like sleep on the Wakanda Forever trailer and then Twitter chatted too much about it and I was like fine I'll go watch it <sighs> that's a really good trailer but this one I don't know and it's possible I'll go ahead and put the disclaimer out there it's possible that maybe this is just really resonating with me um I don't know maybe maybe the story is a little close to home here but like I I do think that they are really putting a lot of uh, uh sell a, a lot of um uh, emphasis on the the inspirational component of this of this movie and i think the trailer does a good job conveying that um and i just hope that the movie lives up to that so um i have one more question 
for us. Uh, okay. Kind of related to movies, kind of not, kind of related to Tiff, kind of not. I'm interested in, 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 in what you guys are looking forward to most with being in Toronto, whether it is Tiff related or not. Good question. Yeah. I, I, I'm going to go Tiff related, but that's because yeah. that's the aim of being there, really. Sure. I'm, I'm most excited for being at the first screening, like world premiere screening, the very first screening, um, being in a packed theater, like I want this thing, I want the theater to be like shoulder to shoulder, elbow to elbow, mm-hmm. everyone just kind of crammed in, you know, maybe you're not even sure if you're gonna get in. I just like, sometimes <laughs> that excitement is like, is fun as well. And yeah, just like, you know, feeling the excitement course throughout the, you know, the theater and the people sitting next to you, like, I, that's what I'm going to this festival for. I've done in-person festivals, obviously, since uh, the pandemic, but this is this is big. This is next level, and I just wanna I wanna be there and taking it all in with a bunch of other people that are either you know in the same kind of position as I am, or vet- festival veterans, or you know just general public buying tickets. It doesn't matter. I just want everyone to be in there and just ready to take it all in. That's what I'm excited for. Yeah, I think that's a, a good point because, you know, uh, we do like the Seattle Film Festival and Vancouver Film Festival and they have world premieres, but they're not they're not usually films that go on to be like mainstream hits and things that that kind of dominate the mainstream. And so to be at a festival where you can be at that very first screening and be someone with the very first reactions to that movie, like, yeah, that that is I, I don't I actually don't think I've internalized exactly how exciting that's gonna be. So yeah. <laughs> when, I, when we found out that we can have like get premium tickets, yeah. I was like, oh, this changes everything. Game changer for sure, for sure. Todd, what are you looking forward to at Toronto? Um, it's gonna sound masochistic, but I'm really looking forward to like the days where I where it's like I'm rushing out of the movie and I have 45 minutes before the next movie. <laughs> and it's like the going to be the fourth movie of the day. And I'm just like, <laughs> oh my God. Just to really like be in the heart of of cinema mm-hmm. for just in the throes of it and like have given up all like my autonomy to just like the movie schedule. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, I'm also looking forward to, you know, hanging out in person again and this time in an extended fashion. And Mm -hmm. really being able to like share that kind of just like that, that movie loving environment completely surrounding us and not just like when the three of us are going from like bar to bar and we're just bringing it with us, but it's going to be like (laughs) fully atmospheric, just pressing down on us to where we can only think about movies and nothing else. I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. I love it. You guys are in the right mindset. You guys are ready for this. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm most looking forward to eight o'clock bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> I look forward to having my Manhattan or my or my uh, old fashioned, and then turning in at nine o'clock. That's gonna be great. <laughs> you're gonna be able. You could handle the midnight screenings. Like it's gonna be nine o'clock biologically. You know, theoretically speaking, that you, mm-hmm. we, we will see how I do. I maybe I'll I'll add screen. It, it is possible. We we'll see. But I guess it also depends on how many early morning screenings that I have. So, yeah. I I think we'll I'll leave that up in the air, right? So. <laughs> I think what I'm looking forward to really, uh, obviously everything that you guys just named uh, is is certainly a part of the experience and and a part of the experience that I am really excited about. In all honesty, for anyone who's listening and and doesn't actually know me, I I will be at later screenings than nine o'clock, okay? Uh, So um, I'm looking forward to movies all day, but really I think it's gonna be a great opportunity to, um, to, hang out with people and to hang out with other um, movie people, especially people that I've met on Twitter and have not uh, talked to in real life yet. Like uh, it's so cool to be going to a festival that everybody is like coming for and, and being at. So it, I'm, I'm hoping that I can like make, uh, make time to like grab lunch with people that I, that I've known and, and connected with on Twitter um, uh, or make new connections and, uh, just really grow the network of, you know, film journalists, film critics, um, filmmakers, uh, and and use this opportunity to really do, I mean, I don't, I don't really want to call it networking, but like to, to make connections and um, just expand my, my uh, 
uh, group of, of of people to talk to movie talk with movies about. So I think this is a really good opportunity for that. So yeah, Absolutely. that's Tiff. Yeah. All right. That's Tiff. We did it. <laughs> Let's go ahead and wrap up. I think that's all the notes that I have. Um, I don't know if you guys have anything you're working on, Beaumont, anything that you want to plug real quick? No, just plugging myself and plugging the fact that I'm going to be at TIFF and, mm -hmm. you know, writing super psyched. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, follow me on social media at Best Real, uh, two T's, R-E-A-L. And um, yeah, uh, follow along. This is for real.com, obviously, for all my writing and festival coverage going to try my best to churn out as much as humanly possible for TIFF uh, when I'm not actively watching films, of course. And yeah, no, I'm just uh, excited to, like you said, Thomas, uh, meet new people along the way. So uh, if that's on social media or in person, I, I welcome it all. Very cool. Todd, anything you want to want to add to your um, plugs? Anything you're working on? Same, same platform. Uh, you can find me at Todd underscore complex on social, I think on all social mm -hmm. and then for real. And you probably will see less of me than you'll see at Thomas at yeah. TIFF. But, <laughs> you'll be in theaters. <laughs> yes. Um, I'll happy, happily wave at you between screenings. Yes. That, friendly, friendly waves as we, as we pass by each other. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So um, like you guys, I, I'm, I'm actually spending a lot of time trying to prepare for TIFF um, trying to, trying to get some pre-festival content uh, queued up. Um, I know that there are some screeners that I've that I've watched and want to get some pre-festival pre content out on. So um, keep an eye out for that. Uh, TIFF coverage will begin before TIFF, um, but of course we'll, we'll uh, start pumping out reviews and interviews during the festival as well. Um, but you can, of course, find all that content at thisisforreal.com, like Beaumont said. Um, you can also connect with For Real on social media. The links will be in the description. Um, and you can connect with me personally um, on social media at being TSJ on Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, Letterboxd, and TikTok. Throw TikTok on there now. It's a new thing yeah. for me. <laughs> so um but cool thank you everyone for tuning in we appreciate you uh watching and until next time everyone keep it for real